One of the great mysteries for me about Parsha Kitetse is its organization, or should I say, the very challenging organization of it. Certain sections, according to Chazal, one can see a cascade of one event leading to the next, and in other sections, various mitzvot, one leading to the next. And yet, in the aggregate, Parsha Kitetse is baffling to me. It starts talking about a war and different things that happen, then it's about family life, and then there's a section about uh, ethics, a section about uh, various mitzvah with clothing, and different things. And by the end of the parsha, we're back to Amalek, a lot of different mitzvot uh, back and forth. But it seems to me that Chazal were wise to this idea that it seems as if Moshe Rabbeinu is just delivering, downloading a bonanza of different mitzvot. They tell the story in the Medrash Rabbah and Dvarim Rabbah of a king with an orchard. He dispatches his workers one day without giving them the rate card for the reward they were to receive on account of their work. They all come back at the end of the day, and the king asks each one, where did you work in my orchard? First one says, I dealt with peppers. You get a gold coin, says the king. Second person, same question. Uh, I dealt with uh, white flowers. He receives a half coin. Next person dealt with olives and olive branches. That'll be 200 zoos. So Amrulo, the workers said to them, You should have told us, sire, which tree, which part of the vegetation was the most valuable. We would have all gone to work there. The king said to them, Had I told you that, How would all of my orchard be completed? Say Chazal, exactly for this reason does the Torah leave out the mention of the reward for mitzvot. Instead, only two mitzvot are mentioned. The hardest mitzvah, kibud avaim, the easiest mitzvah, so says the Torah, shiluach hakan, sending away the mother bird, another mysterious mitzvah. And the idea here that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not want to reveal the level of reward per mitzvah explains the Svat Emet, that this idea teaches us that there are two planes on which we do our mitzvot. Ki lechol mitzvah yesh bifrat, kifi ha-mitzvah, he writes. Every mitzvah has its own individual reward. Aval but in addition to that, yesh schar bichlal al gmar hapardes, there's reward for completing the orchard. Veza schar shaveh lechol ha-poalim, and this reward is equivalent for all of the workers, uscharze ole al kulana. And this uniform reward given to each and every one who tends the king's garden, that one is a greater level of reward. Now, when we find ourselves presently as one congregation, but unfortunately for the moment, unable to gather together, we realize that we have various mitzvot ahead of us. Those of us who are zochim to be able to go into a Beit Knaz, into a shul, so we're doing that. Those who are still outside, those who for a Shani Yom Kippur will be davening in a tent with Or Torah or somewhere else, that's your station now. But instead of feeling bad, how come I can't do this, or I used to do that, whatever it might be, ask yourself, what mitzvah can I do now, to the best of my ability? And that's the station a Kaddish Baruch has given me, that is my charge. That's the part of the garden I need to tend. Let a person with greater means and ability to be able to contribute to the world of Bikur Cholim to visit with people if they can do so in a safe manner. Let the people who want to engage in acts of chesed in other ways do so. For the people who are able to help contribute financially with whatever gifts a Kodesh Baruch Hu gave them for the health and welfare and for the future, of shuls like ours, congregation or Torah, please do so. Think about all of the yeshivot. Think about the day schools in our town, our high schools, particularly Ida Crown Jewish Academy. Think about the great work of the Jewish United Fund. Think about all of the myriad chesed organizations, Zionist organizations. If we will not support them, who's going to do it? You know, there's a Gemara in Masech Baba Batra that asks, what does it mean when the prophet Yeshayahu said to the Jewish people that the acts of tzedakah themselves, the yilbash tzedakah, that people will wear the tzedakah kishirion like body armor. Says the Gemara, Andav Tet, Amabet, 
from Baba Batra, Lomailacha to teach you, Mashir Yonzeh, just this coat of armor, Koklipu, Klipim, Tzteref, Lashir Gadol, it's not really made of one solid sheet. It's tiny pieces, little pieces that are woven together in order to keep the flexibility within the uniform, within the, the mail of armor. So too, af tzedaka, kol pruta u pruta mitzarefet l'chesh bon gadol. Each and every small amount contributes to a great accounting. My dear friends, as we're going into Parsha Ki as we're looking through the Parsha, hopefully, and finding some mitzvot that we find more readily accessible and others that are more challenging for us to even get wrap our heads around, let alone to uh, find a circumstance where we would observe them. Recognize, as the Zohar HaKadosh teaches, that the Taryag mitzvot are Taryag itin, which means 613 opportunities. They're ways to relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to follow his command, whatever our station might be in life. And this, says the Sfat is the secret of why the only two mitzvot whose reward is given to us in the Torah, again, the bracketing of the hardest and the easiest, the reward is the same, a richut yamin, a long life. Whether that long life means it will be expressed in this world, or whether it refers to the long life of the yom shekula aruch of the world to come. The idea that an individual's mitzvot have staying power, even beyond this world, that there are intangible rewards that await us, and that in fact, whatever section of Hashem's garden we're in now, we work for Him, and therefore we need to figure out how we can tend that garden using the mitzvot as the royal instructions about how to best serve Him. Wishing everyone Shabbat Shalom.